everyone, I'm Julie Duvall, editor for Special Projects and Webinars at HBR. As the workplace evolves past physical boundaries, the need for enhanced collaboration has taken center stage. For today's leaders, tapping into AI to elevate team productivity is a strategic priority. Joining me today to help us navigate this shift is Anu Bharadwaj, president of Atlassian, whose leadership is synonymous with transformative product innovation and collaborative technology solutions. Anu, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Anu, you've been at the forefront of a lot of these changes taking place in the world of AI, and certainly things have only moved faster in recent years. How have you seen the changes unfold, and what do you think is causing this acceleration? Yeah, so I've been in uh, technology for about 20 years, uh, Julie, and I have to say um, this is uh, the fastest uh, transformation, transformative uh, technology shift that I have seen in the 20 years of my career. Um, the kind of um, advances we hear about on a weekly, almost daily basis over the past couple of years has been really fascinating for a technologist like me and uh, countless others. Um, why is this uh, accelerating? Um, I think the promise of AI for those of us who were around for a long time, uh, we remember um, the promise of AI was really big in the 90s. And I remember starting off my career at Microsoft uh, uh, building genetic algorithms, uh, which was uh, uh, very much uh, supposed to herald the era of AI. But uh, uh, we really did not have the kind of computational power and the kind of data that's available now uh, that we did uh, 20 years ago when we looked at um, advances in AI. So uh, I think what has caused the acceleration is the increase in computational power that's available to us over the past decade, the explosion of data that's available uh, thanks to cloud computing and multiple uh, software as a service offerings that are around and just the sort of data exhaust coming from a lot of our uh, daily workflows. Um, all of this has culminated in finally um, AI becoming democratized to a lot of us. Even those of us that are not necessarily technical people, you see tools like ChatGPT are now making AI democratized and accessible to a lot of non-technical people, to a lot of lay people who can use it like a consumer tool. Um, I think this is uh, particularly exciting uh, for those of us who are building software products because now we have an additional um, tool in our arsenal to serve our customers and help them supercharge uh, their own individual productivity as well as team's productivity. And I think we're still early on. Uh, so it's an exciting time to be in technology. So I want to touch a little bit on the, the productivity element, because one of the promises of AI is that it does improve um, workplace productivity in organizations, both at the individual level, but also on the team level. Um, would love your thoughts on what specific areas of work or functions you're seeing AI improve. Yeah, that's a great question. And it's a, it's a question whose answer has evolved over the past uh, year or so. So if you asked me the same question last year, my answer would probably have been uh, different. It just is a testament to the pace of change. Um, at Atlassian, we are a collaboration company. Um, so we really, day in and day out, the thing we think about is how do we make teams work better? How do we supercharge uh, teams so that they can collaborate better? Um, so for me personally, uh, the question of how does AI help not only individual productivity, but team productivity is especially uh, dear to my heart. So let's look at just individual productivity. As an example, the way I use um, uh, AI for individual productivity is uh, things like doing research, looking up a, a person that I haven't met before that I'm getting introduced to for the first time, getting some context about them, what are their interests, what, what, what are their uh, um, current pieces of work that's relevant, that's overlapping between my work and their work. Um, using AI tools for uh, personal productivity tasks, like um, building simple automations that help me synchronize across calendars, that can help me uh, set uh, reminders and take actions based on um, um, my schedule in the workday, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, but I think what is uh, truly transformative is um, how will it help us 
uh, collaborate better? How will it? How will AI really help us achieve great things together as uh, as teams? Because the thing that will not change, even in an AI powered world, is the element of human creativity, the element of human collaboration. Uh, there is always going to be a need for teams to come together to do great things. That's what makes humanity special too, right? And so for how do we make teams uh, uh, pro more productive with AI, specifically the areas where we are seeing uh, productivity improvements manifest right now are in the areas of coding. You've heard a lot about code generation tools that help developers automate some of the more uh, simple rote sort of tasks in uh, planning tasks, in planning their work, um, how AI can actually help take a problem statement and break it down into multiple tasks in the areas of customer support. Uh, for example, we ourselves um, use our um, uh, internal help desk to, uh, we call it virtual agent in Jira service management. And the productivity gains with that have been phenomenal. Uh, we've uh, managed to um, serve over 50% of the tasks that have been raised by employees have been intercepted by the virtual AI powered agents. This has saved us thousands of hours, uh, thousands of uh, man days overall and made our human agents a lot more productive. So it frees up their time to do uh, creative tasks. Um, also, how does AI really help uh, people understand who uh, is a domain expert in a given area, who to reach out to help for when they are stuck with a problem? Um, so the promise of how we can use AI to supercharge teams is uh, really high and uh, it's an exciting uh, it's an exciting evolving area that we at Atlassian are very much uh, interested in working on on a daily basis. So I want to stick with teams um, for a minute more um, because now we're all um, in working in distributed teams, remote work is prevalent. Um, do you see AI helping this or more specifically actually, what are some of the challenges that we should be wary of in this sort of new environment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, specifically for us at Atlassian, uh, we have about 12,000 um, uh, employees spread across 11 countries. So even prior to the pandemic, uh, any global multinational company is by definition uh, doing distributed work, as you know. Um, and so in that kind of a distributed setting, how do you make collaboration simple? How do you unite people behind a common shared purpose? How do you get them to understand the company strategy and how the work that they do really contributes to that? How, how do you get them to understand what customers need and how, how the work they do can actually fulfill that need? Uh, that is a universal problem for uh, anybody, uh, any company with uh, distributed work. Um, AI is particularly helpful in uh, those situations um, because uh, with AI, you can really bring a lot of those latent connections between people, uh, collaboration between teams right to the forefront. Uh, a tangible example is um, we have a tool called Loom, which basically allows us to build asynchronous uh, videos. So you can record a video message and you can then share it with a bunch of people and those people can then post reactions. So think about it like uh, enterprise TikTok, uh, basically. Um, so I use uh, Loom a whole lot uh, across uh, Atlassian. I post a weekly video update. Um, it's just a short video that says, here are the customers I met this week, kind of an update in the world of Anu. Um, and Loom has a set of AI-powered capabilities that make this experience uh, really come alive. So it automatically generates a summary of my video and a transcript. It allows me to do very quick, easy video editing based on... Um, AI-powered capabilities um, on top of the video. And it really brings an element of human connection because with distributed work, the challenge is you often uh, end up in virtual conversations. So text doesn't quite uh, convey the humanity of the person, doesn't quite convey the mood of the person. Or uh, what somebody says with a smile on their face is very different than what somebody says with a scowl on their face. And so Loom, especially with the AI-powered capabilities we've added, uh, helps in that kind of a distributed setting. And more and more uh, such AI capabilities uh, will really help bring teams together in distributed settings. One of the things we hear about, um, which is more of a concern, is that AI contributes to you know this massive generation of content. Um, how do you think companies should think about managing that? 
that's an interesting question um even outside of ai i think the content proliferation uh, problem was a problem that we had to deal with in uh, technology and it departments for a while now uh, why is that the case because uh, cloud computing democratized the, the number of players who could who could come and build a product and have customers use their product so we went from a world where there were a few big uh companies providing software to now thousands of companies uh thousands of uh, companies who went public thousands of companies who built multi million dollar businesses offering digital services uh, thus accelerating the digital transformation of pretty much every company uh, in the um, in multiple industries um as a result what happened is there was a lot of uh, what you would say data exhaust coming from uh, those digitized workflows um but content Uh, uh while it was still in the realm of a human had to basically create the content finish the content curate the content and put it out there was still a constraint on top of um the volume of that content generated but now with generative ai uh, content creation has become uh, much simpler as you've seen with sora so some of the multimodal models where you can produce audio video text multiple kinds of uh, content Uh, so the, it definitely does feel like an acceleration in terms of the different uh, kinds of content and volume of content available but ai also presents a solution uh, to that in its own self uh, for example uh, uh, one of the things you can do with ai is um, uh, feed it a bunch of um, content and say give me a summary of this content or, or tell me just the top 3 bullet points of what this uh content is trying to indicate and whether it be a video or an image or a piece of text um and that technology is now democratized to an extent where um a lot of people can make use of it a good tangible example is in one of our atlassian products called confluence which is a knowledge management tool uh, we've introduced features that say when you're looking at a document there is a little magic button called summarize which can basically look through the entire pdf look through the entire document and give you a three sentence summary and um, so a uh, dominos pizza is uh, one of our uh, customers of atlassian intelligence and uh, uh, i was talking to the customer when they said um, we can now get five sentence summaries of uh, huge pieces of content which has really been helpful in understanding the gist of what we need to do and what action we need to take thereafter so content management has become a lot simpler even things like changing tonality so for in the customer support uh, use case um, you're dealing with an angry customer on the other side so you want the tone the tenor of your messages to really be responsive to what the customer's feeling is on the other side and ai can help change the tone uh, change that tenor or change the content such that it's uh, adaptive and suitable to the situation so i think while ai accelerates that uh, problem of content proliferation it also offers a bunch of different solutions that are very helpful for uh, people worldwide so i want to um switch gears a little bit because we're talking about the actual technologies um but what about the skills that employers need to hire for in this new ai driven world are you seeing or do you think companies will start to rapidly upskill their workforce or hire new skills how do you think about that Uh, th- that's definitely uh, an interesting question to ponder for all of us uh, irrespective of the industry we are in uh, in the high tech industry there is definitely a demand for uh, machine learning uh, engineers for uh, people who are uh, highly specialized in uh, data science and um, uh, ai specific skills and you see that show up in the hiring market however for um, companies at large i think the trends that will be interesting are going to be driven by a singular belief that ai is going to be additive it's going to help augment human productivity um rather than ai is going to automate a bunch of different things end to end that we are doing today i think we are not yet at that point um so the way to think about that in my mind is really what are the roles that ai can help support and can help unleash more productivity in so that uh, the humans in those roles are able to then focus on some of the more creative aspects of their job so in terms of upskilling uh, for employees i think it's critical that um, 
companies really look at how they can help their employees use some of these technologies. In some areas, it is more accessible than in others. Like uh, the first question you were asking around uh, what are the areas where AI productivity manifests already? Things like customer support, software development, uh, automation of test cases. Th there's a few areas that we can already see that the tools available are really helpful. And companies really need to think about upskilling employees in terms of how to use those tools. Um, really provide training and uh, enablement and education around using those in their day-to-day -day work. Uh, second, I think uh, what's going to be interesting is as AI helps automate some of these uh, road pieces of work, I think we'll also see um, new roles emerge, new, new kinds of creativity be unleashed amongst um, companies that are simply not accessible today. Um, a great example is an IT department that I haven't any, I haven't met any IT department in the last 20 years of working with different IT workers that said, oh, I don't have enough things to do. Uh, they're always overwhelmed. They're always overworked. So uh, the promise of being able to use some of the AI technologies to help deal with that overwhelm, to help make automation more uh, prevalent and useful in those cases, I think will automatically help with the kind of uh, skills that employees will value and need in the future. Mm -hmm. So as leaders, um, which many of our, our audience are in organizations, what are some of the key considerations that they should keep in mind as AI tools are introduced? I mean, seemingly there's new ones every day, um, but what should they be mindful of as they're rolling this out across their organization? That's a great question. And it's one that um, our customers ask us a fair bit. Um, and a lot of my peers are thinking about as it's relevant to their daily uh, work. Um, one counterpoint I would offer is there's also a lot of hype surrounding a bunch of uh, different AI products today. Because uh, uh, we are kind of at a point in the hype cycle where I think last year it felt like everything was going to be uh, uh, somewhat AI washed, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but we this year, it feels like we have a lot more clarity. We've had uh, close to 18 to 24 months of technology advances, and now the time has come for us to really think about what is it that can be applied and productivity unlocked versus what is a cool, new, shiny thing that we can go explore. So for leaders, I think it is very important to understand uh, what are actionable, useful applications of you, uh, of AI that you can use in your own organization and focus on those and not be distracted by a bunch of uh, other things. Second, it's very important to understand what are the specific use cases and workflows that AI can help with. Uh, things like customer outreach, creating uh, marketing content, personalizing uh, uh, demos uh, of uh, products. And internal use cases, like handling uh, internal HR questions or uh, laptop policy questions, IT policy questions, um, handling um, uh, employee onboarding. Uh, th that's a use case that we use internally a whole lot. And uh, we also have a lot of customers use our products. Recently, I was talking to a customer that said they've cut down their employee onboarding time using some of the AI capabilities from uh, four months to 1.4 months which is a pretty dramatic uh, productivity gain. Um, so it's useful to identify what are the specific use cases and workflows where you can apply AI and um, use appropriate tools for that. Third, it's highly important uh, in uh, today's world that uh, we follow um, ethical guidelines and responsible guidelines in terms of uh, building AI products and for those of us deploying AI products, that we buy from a vendor that is trustworthy, reputed, and we understand what is their philosophy and stance around AI uh, responsible use. For example, at Atlassian, we have put out a responsible technology uh, uh, template that we use ourselves and we help customers um, use if they are building AI products themselves. Because AI is only as good as the data uh, that you have the AI product uh, uh, be able to access. And it's important to be cautious and protective about the data that you have and who you give access to. So uh, understanding regulation policies, understanding uh, the way 
AI uh, uh, products are built and using trustworthy vendors uh, is the third thing that I would advocate for. And lastly, um, it's important to separate the uh, extent to which you can deploy some of this AI technology uh, for your use cases um, from the hype versus reality. Uh, from my experience, a uh, lot of the productivity improvements come from deploying even just uh, partial automations of some of these workflows. You don't have to take an entire end-to-end -end job and try and replace it with one AI agent. I don't think that is a particularly helpful approach. Um, versus being able to say, here are use cases that the AI agent is useful for, and we will place the AI uh, tool in the hands of employees who are actually in the midst of that workflow, mostly creating collaboration between AI and humans. I think that's really the most productive edge of adoption. Mm. So you mentioned ethical considerations and sort of risk management. Um, I imagine that's a barrier for some leaders who just don't want to get involved in that or um, you know, feel like they can't address those issues. Uh, what are some of the other barriers that you've seen leaders sort of stumble with as they um, go on this journey? Um, that's a that's a great uh, thing to uh, think through, uh, especially in the current context of uh, the pressure to uh, deploy AI across organizations. Because um, you you hear every day about companies who uh, talk about operational savings, who talk about uh, uh, cost savings by deploying AI technology. Uh, that uh, being um, completely out of that loop and not being aware of the technologies available for you to use is no longer an option, right? Because we've reached some point of uh, early adoption of AI technology that makes it uh, incumbent upon all of us as technology leaders to make sure that we understand what's available to us and use it in a responsible way. Uh, one place where I, uh, a few places where I've seen tech leaders struggle with uh, deploying uh, AI across their organizations. One is uh, what I talked about in terms of understanding who is trustworthy, who is not trustworthy. So in this case, um, I, I would I, I strongly advise uh, being able to deploy products and tools from vendors that you trust, who are reputable, who are trustworthy, who you've had a relationship with, who... Um, you understand uh, how their track record and how they've built products in the past and being very uh, uh, very clear about their data usage policy. Are they using your data to train their model? How exactly will your data get uh, exposed in different ways? Uh, that's an important one to understand, but, but also an important one to e evaluate deeply when you're trying to uh, use uh, AI uh, products internally. A second place where I've seen uh, leaders stumble is um, really around thinking, oh, will AI take all jobs in my team? Is it going to replace a bunch of uh, different people on my teams? Um, as with any new technology, there is always a sense of fear of um, what, what does this mean for the future? And given the level of uncertainty associated with any fast-moving technology, there's a natural human reaction. Uh, but there it's helpful to think about um, how do we uh, start with augmenting um, our teams with the power of uh, what's available with AI-enabled tools uh, versus um, think about complete replacement, like I said. Uh, a third area that I think is uh, also a bit of uh, an impediment for AI adoption is uh, really being clear about what, in what ways can AI help because it's not helpful to deploy uh, AI products in their enabled products in their current form in every possible workflow today. I think there are special areas, specific areas where it's especially helpful, and some areas where you really still need uh, human involvement. You still need human creativity. You need human coordination, uh, advanced reasoning, coordination, all of those. So. Uh, being able to make the distinction between where is it productive and where is it not productive and really encouraging employees to uh, try this out on their own, to provide them the training and skills and uh, enabling them to make responsible choices themselves, I think is the most scalable way that uh, leaders can uh, stay on the bleeding edge of the curve, but also protect themselves from some of the potential harmful ramifications. 
So one of the things you mentioned when you were answering that question is um, the hype uh, versus the reality. And how do you differentiate between the two, especially um, when the technologies are just moving so quickly? Yeah, so I, I would answer that from two lenses. So for those of us who are uh, technology builders, who are really building this for our own customers, the single most important thing is to make sure that uh, we put out these features to our customers, these products to our customers and get user feedback early. So in our own case, in Atlassian, uh, last year we announced uh, what we call Atlassian Intelligence, uh, which is a layer of uh, intelligence across um, the data collected by 14 different Atlassian products, which help uh, our users unlock insights based on their own data. Uh, that's what AI is particularly helpful for. So there were some use cases there that were really helpful and some use cases which were not as helpful. Uh, as we ship uh, Atlassian intelligence to customers and uh, several tens of thousands of um, customers started using uh, Atlassian intelligence, we were able to see quick feedback loops which uh, helped them form us which of these are actually useful and which of these use cases are not that useful, not that sticky and hasn't yet realized the promise of what it can be. Um, so. Uh, doing quick feedback loops and understanding from users what the real world value of these scenarios are, what the real world value of how users are using these capabilities are, is a critical thing. I think that helps distinguish the hype from reality because uh, product analytics usage data does not lie. Uh, so you can uh, compare reality with what your uh, aspiration as a product builder was. A second lens around um, as consumers, how to distinguish between the hype and reality is that uh, in most of these cases, really using those products in the context of um, somewhat analogous data to what you have in your setting or using the products in your context, in your organization's context is going to be the proof of the pudding. So it's uh, cool to see some demos and be wowed uh, because uh, uh, demos always set up the product in the best possible light. But when you bring it to your own workflow and you try using it inside of your own workflows, inside of your own use cases, it should make sense. And the amount of effort required to deploy it and use it should actually be far lower than what you're expending right now. I, I think that separates the wheat from the chef. So in my experience, having used a lot of these tools almost on a daily basis, uh, I can uh, clearly see that well over half of it is really a lot of hype, whereas some of them are early on and uh, very few are really at the point where, oh, th this, when I deploy it, uh, offers some real productivity gains that are game changing, like the virtual agent example I was giving. So looking ahead, um, what do you envision as the next frontier for AI in terms of its impact on not just business, but even outside business in our society? And how can companies prepare for that? Yes, that, that, I think that's an important question uh, for, uh, for our times. For uh, I think it's a generational shift that we're seeing with uh, artificial intelligence that is not, not only intellectually interesting to think about, but also is uh, it behooves us in terms of responsibility, in terms of uh, just our ethical duties to think about what, what does this mean for humanity, not just for individual productivity, team productivity companies, but what, what does it mean for humanity? Uh, it's a turn of technology that is so uh, foundational uh, to the way that uh, um, to the way that we uh, live and work. Um, so in the future, I think the one thing that's for certain is the uncertainty of the situation. Uh, I think AI has had three uh, historic moments where we thought, ah, oh, this is the moment when AGI is going to come forth, artificial general intelligence. And we've been wrong in the past. And now it feels like we've built upon uh, multiple foundations that it feels pretty real that we are at a moment where uh, perhaps uh, uh, autonomous AI might be within grasp. Uh, but even without getting there, I think there is a lot of uncertainty associated with that and uh, that there are multiple philosophical takes you can uh, take on that. But even before that, I think what is certain is that this is transformative technology for, um, uh, for all of us, irrespective of which industry we are in. 
irrespective of whether we're building consumer software or uh, business to business software or enterprise software for governments for um healthcare irrespective of which industry we are operating in so uh, the way i think about it is it really democratizes creation uh, the ability to take an idea from a thought in your head to a reality in the universe just became available to a lot more people than before uh, earlier i'm a computer science engineer so uh, earlier you had to go through technical training you had to teach yourself how to code how to uh, really build something that there was a thought in your head to uh, an application that's out there in the world uh, but ai really helps make that possible for a lot of people without being technically trained and throw that in with uh, robotics and it makes it also uh, um also possible to bring your creations to life in the physical world too uh, which is such an exciting thing uh, as uh, humanity it basically makes a lot more of us it makes available to a lot more of us that element of uh, creation of creativity uh, that was available only to a small group of people before i think that's the exciting part of the technology which is balanced with therefore it is important for those of us who are involved in the creation of some of these uh, tools and capabilities that allow said democratization to make sure that we do it in the best response most responsible way in the most ethical way possible such that we don't build uh biases and amplify biases uh, in, in these products and we are thoughtful about uh, what manif- what this manifests as in our technologies well anu i'm afraid we're out of time for today but i want to thank you so much for sharing your experience and insights with us today thank you so much for having me julie it's been a pleasure